So far, 2015 has been a phenomenal year for me. Lucinda and I just celebrated our 18th year of blissful matrimony. We moved into an awesome new house. We learned that we were one of Patreon's top 100 earners for 2014. We launched our second podcast, The Skeptocrat, now available on iTunes, Stitcher, and other fine podcast aggregators, and it shot up all the way into the 50s on the iTunes charts. And as we may have already mentioned, The Scathing Atheist was nominated for a People's Choice Podcast Award, the undisputed top honor in our industry. I'm reminded of an interview I heard with Kurt Vonnegut that was rebroadcast shortly after his death. He, he talked about what he called an artistic survivor syndrome, this feeling of guilt that surrounded his success when he thought of the many unknown writers every bit as talented as himself but destined to obscurity by the blind judgment of chance. Now, I don't know if I buy the concept of many unknown writers that were as talented as Kurt Vonnegut, but I am starting to understand the feeling that he's talking about. You know, here we are awash in good fortune, lucky enough to be able to pay our bills through our passion, you know, lucky enough to be recognized for what we love to do, and lucky enough to live in a time and a place where saying what we say won't get you killed. Because sure, 2015 has been a great year for me, but for the voices of atheism in general, this has been a terrifying year. I'm sure I won't be the first to tell you about uh, Avijit Roy, and I'm probably mispronouncing his name, for that I apologize, but he was the American blogger and atheist that was murdered in Bangladesh last week. He was an engineer and the founder of a popular Bengali-language secular blog. He was a Bangladeshi-born American citizen on his way from a book fair at Dhaka University when he and his wife were attacked with a machete. He was killed, and his wife was seriously injured. She was attacked as well. And as I'm still trying to process this, I hear the latest on Raif Badawi. I'm sure you're following this story as well, but if you aren't, he's the Saudi atheist blogger that was originally sentenced to a thousand lashes for casting doubt on the Islamic theocracy. And for a while, it looked like the news might be good as the government was making noise about sparing him the hundreds of lashes still remaining on his sentence. And then over this past week, news got decidedly worse as reports suggest he might be facing the death penalty now. There are unconfirmed reports that they might subject him to a second trial, this time for apostasy, before the same judge that sentenced him to the lashes in the first place. And yes, the penalty for apostasy is death. And of course, this all comes on the heels of a deadly shooting in Copenhagen where an artist who drew Muhammad cartoons was the target. And in a year that was barely a week old when a couple of French gunmen mowed down 12 people for the same crime of satirical blasphemy in France. This year is too young for this many martyrs. And of course, I sit here with my survivor syndrome. I sit here in the relative safety of possibly the least dangerous country in the history of Earth to be an atheist in. And I wonder if I'd have the balls to do this if there was a legitimate threat against my life, right? Would I be willing to risk my life for reason? And I hate to admit it, but I don't think I would be. I don't think I'm anywhere near as brave as these people. You know, there's this pervasive feeling in the atheist community that, that, that we're winning this war. The numbers domestically and worldwide look good for us, and maybe the increasingly brazen acts of our opponents are just a sign of their desperation. But we can't afford to assume that our victory is inevitable. Religion has dealt with some pretty big threats before and crushed them. And even as our ranks swell, we find ourselves in a world with more blasphemy laws, not fewer. You know, we watch the heart-wrenching videos of religious zealots robbing Iraq of its incredible history and many of its citizens of their heads. The victories of the secular movement in comparison seem too small to celebrate. And even more depressing is the stark realization that we'll never match their passion, and we never want to, right? I mean, there are a few heroes in the atheist movement that might be willing to die for it, but none of us ever will or should be willing to kill for it, because secularism doesn't allow you to divorce yourself from your humanity the way religion does. We, we look at them and we see the victims of institutionalized ignorance and unscrupulous prophets. They looked at us and they see the minions of evil incarnate. And of course, this moral meliorism is our weakness, but it's also our weapon. Because if we're going to win, it'll be because even the most indoctrinated mind can still sort out that the side doing all the killing is the bad one. There are more of us every day, and the only reason that people like Badawi, Roy, and the Charlie Hebdo cartoonists are targets is because most of us are still hiding in the trenches. And believe me, I am fully aware of the hypocrisy of saying that from behind a pseudonym. I've been aware of that a lot lately. Now, when we started the show, I didn't use a pseudonym out of fear for my life or my safety or the safety of my family. It was actually because I was a very public face for the company I worked for. It was a toy company. There are a lot of fucks in this show. Didn't work out very well. But it's been quite a while since that company fucked me over. I mean, since I parted ways with that company and signed a non-disclosure agreement regarding the conditions of my termination. So I haven't had that excuse for a while. You know, some of it's just inertia. I've, I've, I've always been Noah, so I can't start being somebody else now. But after reflecting on this latest in a wellspring of attacks on vocal atheists, I also can't stay in the trench. My real name is Aaron Matthew Davies. 
I was born March 5th of 1976 in Trenton, Michigan, and I am an atheist. I am damn proud to speak against the tyranny of conscripted ignorance, and I am damn proud of the company I stand in. You can, um, you can still call me Noah, by the way. 